Hello, this is Robbie Mitchell here from Head in the Cloud Development. Today I'm going to walk you through how to set up and test machine-to-machine -machine integration credentials in NetSuite. The goals of this video are to help you understand how machine-to-machine -machine client credentials work in NetSuite, to walk you through creating the necessary certificates, and to demonstrate how to test your integration using Postman. So what do you need to know to get started? This video is intended for NetSuite developers and administrators. You should have the administrator role in NetSuite to do everything I cover here. Second, you'll need the Postman app. And third, you'll want to download this Postman collection here to help with the testing. So before we get into it any farther, let's talk about what machine-to-machine -machine integration is for a minute. Basically, this is what you would use if you have a third-party app that needs to access NetSuite's backend without any user interaction. In other words, it's all back-end servers doing the work. Alternatively, if you did have a user interaction taking place, then you would not want to use this. Instead, you'd want to use OAuth 2.0 Authorization Code Gramp, covered in my video from July 2021. I'll also mention here that if maybe you're just using Postman to do integration testing, then in my opinion, this machine-to-machine -machine authentication is better. It just makes the authentication process easier. Otherwise, you'll end up having to generate new authentication codes in the other process, which is very tedious. So here's what we're going to do specifically in this demonstration. We're going to create an integration record. We're going to create the keys and certificate files. We're going to load the machine-to-machine -machine certificate into NetSuite. Then we'll use Postman to generate the access token. And finally, you'll use that access token to access the REST API. Okay, enough talk. Let's get to the demonstration. So step one is to create the integration record. So we'll go to Setup, Integration, Manage Integrations, New. First I'll enter a name. Now the first thing we need to do is uncheck the things that we're not going to use. We're not going to use token-based authentication here. We're going to use Client Credentials Machine to Machine Grant. Now I'm going to enable this for RESTlets and Web Services, because I like to use both. And now I'm going to click Save. Now make sure to note this consumer key here. We're going to need it in Step 4. So Step 2 is to create the certificate files on your computer. And I'll be honest, I was totally lost on how to do this at first. Thankfully, I attended a session at Sweet World 2021 on how to secure your integrations the right way, and Bruce showed us the way. Let me show you something quickly. If you go to Sweet Answers, and look at Article 102501. This here is the slide deck from the presentation that I attended. This presentation is also where this Postman collection I mentioned comes from. So I'm going to download that now. And I'm showing you this now because this collection has in the notes a tip about how to generate the certificate and key. So I'm going to import in what was in this zip file. So in Postman, I'll go to File, Import. I'm just going to drag and drop this folder. And just to reduce some clutter, I'm only going to import the, I'm only going to import this REST session test and the client credentials one. And now if I click on this folder for secure OAuth 2.0 REST client credentials, in the documentation section, we find this very helpful command. Now this is to be used with OpenSSL. So I'm going to copy this. And then on my Mac, I'm going to open my terminal. In Windows, I think you'd use PowerShell. Now wherever you are, is where the files are going to be generated. So I'm going to go to my downloads folder. And then I'm going to type in open SSL and then I'm going to paste in this command and press enter. Now it asks a few questions and to be honest I don't think the answers really matter, at least not for testing. So I'm just going to press enter on these.
And when we're done, if I look in my downloads folder, I see that it's created two files here, a certificate and a key. So now we're going to take the certificate file and load it into NetSuite. So if we go to Setup, Integration, OAuth 2.0 Client Credentials, M2M Setup, and click Create New, and you'll select yourself as the entity. For the application, select the integration that you just created, and then load your certificate in the Choose a File. And for my role, I'll use the Developer role. And I'll click Save. So now let's go to step four, setting up the authentication in Postman. Before we run anything, let's take a look at these requests. First, take a look at the URL. All we need to do here is replace the account number in the URL with the account that we're testing in. So let me grab that. Next, let's take a look at the request body. Notice it uses this client assertion postman variable. This is related to this pre-request script here. Now I'm very thankful for whatever genius set this up. Let's look at this for a minute. Notice here that on line 3 we're loading in this JSR assign library. We have another request here that loads this library into Postman. Then it creates a JavaScript web token here. Notice on line 11 the KID needs to be the certificate ID from NetSuite. So let's copy and paste that in. Now the first variable we have here is the consumer key. That comes from our integration record in NetSuite that we just created. So let me copy that. And we're going to set the variable in our environment here. You can click this little eyeball icon to add one. So the variable is consumer key, all caps, and the initial value is that. Next, we again have our URL down here, so I'll paste in my account number again. The next variable we have is the certificate private key. So I'll go back to my environment. And this is the full text content of this key file that we generated. So I'm going to open the key just with a text editor here. and then copy and paste this whole content to this variable. I'm going to make sure to save my environment. Okay, so let's try it out. So first, let's run this get JSR assign crypto library. Okay, got that. So now let's run this. Now look at that, it actually worked. Here's my access token. So now let's try that in this get order request. So the access token is used as a bearer token. And you could set up a variable, but I'm just going to paste the whole thing in here. And again, I need to check this account number, so I'm just going to copy it from the other request. And now notice that this is a REST Web Services request to get sales order ID 1605. I don't even know if I have a sales order 1605, but let's try it and find out. Okay, well I got a message back saying the transaction type specified is incorrect, so that's probably true. Here's my list of sales orders, so let's try getting this sales order instead. Okay, well now I got a permission violation saying I need the sales order permission in order to access this page. That's probably absolutely correct. So this shows us that our authentication is working, but let me try adding that permission for myself and redoing this. Okay, instead, I found that I do have custom record permissions, so I'm getting a, a map record here. And again, this is just to confirm that the authentication token is working, which it obviously is now. So we have done this successfully. 
So again, I think this is much easier than the authorization code grant flow. And that concludes the demonstration. So feel free to get in touch if you have any questions, and thank you for watching. We'll see you at Sweet World.